Antoine Downs can count on his hands how many black farmers he met when he was a child. Well, a lot of the, the, the black kids never see someone that look like them doing this. They don't think there's no black farmers. And eventually, you know, we might just be extinct. Only about 1.3% of American farmers are black, but that's something he's trying to change. I got refuge here. I got so much refuge. Antoine helped start an organization to mentor younger farmers like Adrian Nelson. You can't, you can see a few pimples. It's starting to get the dent, but it ain't, it ain't as far as long with that one. The 29-year-old works with his father and brothers. They all say it isn't an easy road. Getting funded, that's our biggest problem. I don't know if it's because of, you know, we don't own as much land as the other farmers or if it's just discrimination. But I, I feel it's the latter. I feel it's discrimination. And now, low commodity prices, extreme weather, and the pandemic are putting small farm operations like these at risk of disappearing altogether. Antoine has been farming soybeans and corn in Louisiana's Morehouse Parish since he was 21. I, I talk about the legacy that my great-great-grandfather left, which he was a slave, fought in the Civil War, and after he was mustered out, he bought 80 acres of land. Since then, I'm the first one to buy farmland after that. But he knows he's a rare case. Only 7% of farmers are black in his state. Most operate small farms and often rent the land. To this day, Antoine rents about half of the 600 acres he farms. If your family didn't own land, it's just hard to be successful. A lot of our big, large farmers, they came up with the best of education, went to the best schools, and then it's hard to find someone that's going to follow in your footsteps. That's part of the reason he set up a farmers association and mentorship program in the local area. He's been working closely with Adrian since 2018. When I talk about success, you know, I, I say most of the successful black farmers, and they, they all worked two jobs. Uh, and I took that advice to heart. I got my insurance license to start selling crop insurance. Uh, agriculture is my heart, so I wanted something that going to stay within agriculture as my job as well. In 2015, Adrian, his three brothers, and his father dipped into their savings to start their own farming venture. All of us got together and we put in $2,000 a piece to rent some farmland. And the Lord blessed us and, and we grew from there. Today, they farm 4,000 acres and rent nearly all of it at up to $175 an acre per year. They have relied on loans from the USDA to pay for seed, fertilizer, equipment, and other expenses. And that's where they say they've faced the most discrimination. In certain situations, we, we had to go beyond to prove that we deserve to farm. When others, they, 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 they could farm this year and get a, a, a loan out of this world, then quit next year, they ain't frowned upon. Right. You know, I, he gave it a try, but with us, I knew he wasn't going to do nothing. <laughs> they say they were denied loans or forced to take out more than needed, and they often experienced sellers jacking up prices for equipment. That's why all three of them took Antoine's advice and found second jobs. If we don't have a second job, show second income, we get denied the loan. Right. We get denied because we can't, they say we can't afford to pay it back. And if we don't use all that loan money, they, they reduce it the next year down to where we can't form. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has a long history of discrimination. A study commissioned by the USDA in 1994 found that loans to black male farmers were 25% lower than those given to white male farmers on average. Then, in the late 1990s, two class action lawsuits on behalf of black farmers led to the largest civil rights settlement in history. The USDA paid out around $1 billion to black farmers who had faced discrimination. But nearly 60,000 black farmers did not have their claims heard. 
It took more than a decade for Congress to fund an additional $1.15 billion settlement to make up for it in 2010. The Nelson's father, Willie, received a $50,000 settlement because of a discriminatory loan delay. In a statement to Insider, the USDA said it runs outreach and educational programs specifically targeting farmers who have been historically underserved, including African Americans. It also said the number of loans to minorities is at an all-time high. In spite of this, Adrian and his brothers still struggle with getting loans. They say this is a hurdle that young white farmers in their community don't face as much. We know our counterparts, probably a little younger than us, their loan went through with much more ease. Oh, yeah. They was able okay, to get yeah. equipment right, right. where we didn't. They got living expense where we was denied. But just imagine how far we, was able, we would be now if, you know, just to focus on our farm, build our farming operation, other than working eight hours on the farm now, then going to work another eight hours, you know, on another job. Over the past five years, the Nelson brothers went from farming 30 acres to over 4,000 acres, an area nearly five times the size of New York's Central Park. You know, you need land that you own, you know, no bank, no, no nothing in, on it. Uh, that's the only way you really be profitable because the the land rent is steady increasing. Seeds and chemicals steady going up, commodity prices going down. It's getting, it's tough, it's tough. Farmers in Louisiana had a record number of tropical storms and hurricanes on top of the pandemic in 2020. Antoine was in the middle of harvesting his soybeans when tropical storm Beta hit in September. That's one that's damaged there. You don't want to start getting a, a lot of uh, that type of damage. And see, I'm, I'm just hoping that, you know, we won't have over a 5% loss, but it's going to be some damage. I know that. Despite the hardships, the Nelsons can't imagine a life doing anything other than farming. Uh, you know, I wish that it was easy. But I have no problem with the fight. I'm going a, I'm to a get the same thing just because you want to make it a little difficult. I'm going to show you that that ain't the tyranny. Farming is a great opportunity. It brings us back to our roots. And it's something that, as a color person, that, that we been doing all our lives. You know, if not you, your ancestors did it. And for you to, to have that opportunity to do something that we did for free, and do it and take advantage of it, and especially prosper in it, to make your mother, your dad, your sisters, them proud, get in there, prove the odds wrong, and succeed. <laughs>